Welcome back. In the last episode, we went over the paging library and how it fits into the app's architecture and integrated it into the data layer of the app. We did this using a paging source to fetch a data and then used it along with a paging config to create a pager object. In this video, we're going to start using the pager to start populating the UI. Let's get started. Recall that the pager exposes a stream of paging data, the class responsible for providing a window into the backing data set and publishing updates to it. The app currently has a view model exposing the information needed to render the UI in the UI state data class, in which we expose a search result and in memory cache for result searches that survives configuration changes. With paging 3.0, we drop the search result val from the UI state opting instead to replace it with the flow of paging data repo exposed separately from the UI state. This new flow will serve the same purpose as the search result. That is, it provides a list of items to be rendered by the UI. We update the view model to have a private method, search repo, which calls on the repository to provide a paging data flow from the pager we created in the last video. We can then call on this method to create a paging data flow based on the search items the user enters. We also make use of the cached in operator on the paging data flow, which caches it for quicker reuse using the view model scope. It's important to expose the paging data flow independent of other flows. This is because the paging data itself updates and maintains its own internal stream of data over time. With the flows that comprise the fields of the UI state fully defined, we can combine them into a state flow of UI state, which can then be exposed to and consumed by the UI alongside the flow of the paging data. We are now ready to start consuming a flow with paging data in the UI. The first thing we do is switch the recycle view adapter from a list adapter to a paging data adapter. A paging data adapter is a recycle via adapter optimized for diffing and aggregating updates from paging data to make sure changes in the backing data set are propagated as efficiently as possible. Next, we start to collect from the paging data flow so we can bind its emissions to the paging data adapter using the submit data suspended function. Also, as a user experience perk, we want to make sure that when the user searches for something new, they are taken to the top of the list to show the first search results. We want to do this when we're confident that we aren't loading any more data. We do this by taking advantage of the load state flow exposed by the paging data adapter, and it has not scrolled for current search field in the UI state. The combination of these two creates a flag to let us know if we can trigger an auto scroll. Since the load states provided by the load state flow are synchronous with what is displayed in the UI, we can confidently scroll to the top of the list once the load state flow notifies us we are not loading for each new query. Another advantage of the paging library is the ability to display progress indicators either at the top or bottom of the list with the help of the load state adapter. This is an implementation of RecycleV adapter that is automatically notified of changes in pagers as it loads data, which enables it to insert an item to the end or the top of the list as needed. The best part is you don't even need to change your existing page and data adapter. The with load state header and footer extension conveniently wraps the existing pager adapter with both the header and the footer. The arguments of the with load state header and footer function take definitions of load state adapters for both the header and the footer. The load state adapters in turn host their own view holders, which are bound with the latest load state, making it easy to define the behavior of the views. We can even pass arguments to let us to try loading in case there's an error, which you'll see in the next episode. With that, we've bound our paging data to the UI. For a quick recap, we, integrated the paging data in the UI layer using the paging data adapter, used the load state flow exposed by the paging data adapter to guarantee we only order scroll to the top of the list when the pager is done loading. We've also used the with load state header and footer to add progress bars to the UI when fetching data. 
That's it for this episode. Stay tuned and see you in the next one where we'll be looking at paging from the database as a single source of truth and taking a closer look at the load state flow. See ya.